you're looking at an oil pan from a hundred year old car that's been sitting for 80 or 90 years the license plate says 1926 I dropped the oil pan which is that big thing the oil pan includes a petcock right there that's for checking the oil level no dipstick there's an oil gauge there which that's a glass surface and you can re I'll clean that up and you can read that later and every one of these little things is six cylinder one two three four five six that's where the rod bearings go there was no oiling of the bearings they had to splash in the oil itself I cleaned it out scrubbed it out with diesel kerosene whatever it was there's the pet cock I showed you before it actually sits up here like this when you close it well you're supposed to keep it closed when you open it and the and oil flows out, that means you got too much oil in the pan. You close it, well you leave it open and pour oil in until it starts coming out, then you close it. That's how you figure out there's no dipstick in this thing. And in case you don't know how to use that, there's the oil gauge over here, which you saw when I took it when I had it off before. When I tried to take this oil pan off of here, first thing I did was I drain that's the drain plug there. I took the drain plug out, no oil came out. So, is there no oil in it or what? Well, so I took it off and oil didn't come out because there was about two inches of tar in the bottom sludge. It was not really tar, not thick like on the road, but just very, like Vaseline consistency. The way, this, the way this car is oiled is not like, this is in 1970, this is 100 years ago, they didn't have like modern. Here's what happened. The oil pump is over here, that's why the that's why it's shaped like that. Oil pump sits way over here on this side. It's going to be out of the way of the camshaft. Crankshaft is all here. Camshaft is up here. It drives the oil pump. Which pumps the oil up through a tube to the dashboard. And there's a sight. It just, you just, just it, it sprays the oil against the glass on the dashboard so you can see that the oil is circulating. And there's no oil pressure pump on, no oil pressure gauge on the dashboard. Just a, they call it a sight uh, whatever. It's, you see oil spraying there. And then it comes back down through another tube and it goes back into the engine this way. All the oil goes through there. What's on the other side of there? Well, there's a pipe there. The oil comes back down from the, from the dashboard through that pipe. And on the bottom of this pipe there's a hole here and a hole here and there's holes here. and there's, So there's six different places for, for these troughs and you know what goes in these troughs here? The, it, the oil goes into these troughs. That's where the rod bearing comes down, not the bearing. The crankshaft and the rod bearing just sort of graze close to it. But there's a, a dipper on the end of the rod that dips oil out of there. It dips oil out of there and sprays it. Well, on the downstroke it dips into the oil and on the upstroke, because the piston is up, it sprays oil up into the bottom of the piston and all around the bottom of the cylinder it sprays everything all around on the inside of here and it, it, it oil gets on the camshaft and it, it gets on every part everywhere uh, obviously the main bearings have to get sprayed from oil and there's nothing else that oils that lubricates this engine everything gets everything gets dipped by the bottom of the rod the connecting rod and sprayed it's running so fast and when the oil goes back down in there's three sections of this there's a like a baffle here this is upper this is this you can't tell but it's much lower down here where the where the drain plug is but up here there's a there's a, a baffle and a little flapper valve and a hole there's a hole there and a flapper valve drains into the next section and there's another, there's another baffle here. There's a hole down at the bottom and another little flapper valve. I don't know if you can see that. So there's like three baffles in this oil pan. I don't think you really need that. I mean, if, if this is lower and the oil pump is down here and it's spreading it equally across this pipe, in, and all the oil goes into those six troughs there, that's pretty strange. Well, let's talk about this oil gauge. 
This is the gauge. It fits down in here like this. That's the. This is the gauge that came with the car. It fits down in there, and there's a glass that screws up against the other thing. But I couldn't get it to really work right. This goes up and down, and this. You can see what it says: oil, quarter full, half full, three quarters full, and full. It doesn't measure quarts; it just measures how full it is. I couldn't quite figure out how to get. I couldn't figure out how this. It looks like there might have been some teeth on there somehow, and that's going to turn that somehow. I, I tried five, four or five different things to figure out how to get that float to drive this needle. Then I realized, you know what, I do have a spare engine for this exact same car. So I went and got the spare one. I took the oil gauge out of the other engine, and now it's just sitting there with no with a hole in the middle. It's actually a gear that was missing. There's a gear right there on the very end. Now I got one that works. The other one just ain't gonna work. That's a float. The float drives the gear, and the gear you see that needle going up and down with the cork going up and down and well obviously I've got to scrape that gasket off. I'm not going to put the gauge in until after I scrape the gasket off and clean it all up so I can put that in, put the new gasket. I'm going to glue the new gasket on. I have, I'm going to use this. It's just the right thickness. 36 inches long, which is great because that's 35 inches long. I'm going to make two gaskets, one for this side and one for that side. And I'm going to punch out the holes using a hollow punch. I'll show you that. Make them nice and clean. And then I, and, and seal and glue that in place with the gasket sealant. When that's all done, I'll put this in. Yeah, I got the gasket all cut out. It's all cleaned up on that other. Look at that. Ain't that the way it always is? I'm going to put that gasket in. I don't care if it's broken on the end there. And the way I make the holes in the gasket so round, I got these things called a hollow point. Hollow punch set. It comes in all these different sizes. And all these different sizes. You can make gaskets all, the, all you want to. This is the size I use because that's the size of the... That's the size of the, the bolt, All right? And here you have it. Next video, the gasket's going to be on. Even that broken piece. Now it's time to put the float in. I put some shellac on it to seal the cork. This barely fits. There's the shellac stuff I put on. That's to protect the cork so it doesn't decompose and crumble up. Get that nice and straight. Put a cork gasket in there. And there you have it. Completely mechanical. No computer. And there you have it, finished. There it is again. Here's the car. Just got glass and a windshield a few months ago. Anyway, this is the this is the side that the oil gauge goes on. This is the oil filler spout, obviously. It's in the front. Oil goes in the front, goes down through the one flapper valve, down through the other flapper valve, and finally gets to the back where the guess what? There's another oil filler spout. Here's the underside of it. You can see that's where the oil pan goes. 
That's where the curved part was. That's the oil pump. That's the oil pump screen. I'm going to take that off and clean it off. There's a main bearing right there. There's one in the back. I think there's four bearings. I'll look it up. There's that third one. There's obviously one in the back. Anyway, here's the oil dipper I was talking about. It's not even like a cup or a split. It's like just a piece of metal. It's like a rod shaped piece of metal. Let me see if I can zoom that in. No, it's out of focus. Figures. There's one rod. There's another rod. There's a third rod. Fourth rod. Those two are together. Fifth rod. That's the same. That's with that one. And down here on the bottom, number six. Six cylinders. Let me get the light on here so you can see. That's the bottom of the piston. Pretty quick. Cool. Oh, nice. See that? Those are the bottom of the pistons. Three, three and four. See much. I'm gonna squirt the hell out of it up there. There's a the camshaft. I can't tell from looking at it if it looks worn down or not, but I'm not gonna think it really is because I know this car was put into the garage, into the barn, 80 years ago because the steering was out. It must have hit a rock or something. That's a camshaft that pushes the rods up and down, uh, push rods up, which you are actually on the outside of the engine. You saw them. And there's the shaft that comes down that turns the oil pump. No, I'm in the wrong side. I'm sorry, I'm stupid. I'm in the wrong side. What is that shaft? Oh, oh I know. That's, that's a push rod. <laughs> I'm backwards. I'm upside down. Here's the uh, oil pump. And there's the metal, that copper pipe there that goes up to the oil tube that pushes it up to the dashboard. That's the, that's the back of the car there. It's towards the dashboard. That's the front of the car. Here's the hole that comes down from the oil filler. Let me see if anything else is exciting. There's a gear that drives the camshaft. That's in the back. No. That's the front. That's the front. That's what drives the camshaft. It's driven by the steer by the timing gear in the front. So what's this then? What does that drive? That's the oil pump. That drives the oil pump, okay? Can you see that in there? I don't know if the camera is where my eye is. I can see it with my eye. That's the gear there. The camshaft drives the oil pump right up there and here's, here's where it comes in. Flywheel. Mouse nest. These flywheels always have mouse nests in them. But that flywheel is pretty monstrous. That's the way the, the starter motor grabs onto that thing. It slides back in. But you can see it's really in good shape. I just got to pull the mouse nest. Or maybe not. I just leave the mice in there. They'll come out. Centrifugal force them to get those mice. They'll scare them out. That's a hundred-year-old mouse nest. Let me just hold this nice and still so you can gaze up into there. I'll put, I'll put this down on the floor so even. That crap shot. That crankshaft looks like it was handmade. Try not to move this camera too much. Well, you know what I'll do? I just, I'll just set the camera down here. There you go. Study that for a few. Get a good look. Crankshaft looks like it's handmade here. It's like if somebody put that up on a rock. Look at this. Those are all handmade. There's nothing. Yeah, that's just unbelievable. You don't see that on modern cars. That's piston number one, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm just, I'm sorry, that's a main bearing. That's five. One, two, main bearing. Three, four. Main bearing, five, six. I'm not taking that apart. I think that's still good. I'm going to use it just the way it is.